The beauty of this method is you can spit out a whole variation really quickly. Let's let's just go through the process. So the, you can do this with any sort of curve generating software. What we're going to do, what we want to do is create a curve. That's the profile of the object. And then we're going to revolve, like spin uh, the curve around to create the bottle itself. So this is the file set up. Notice the positioning of the curve, okay? Uh, the origin is actually up here. So X, we've got X going across and Y going down. And if we bring up like say the rulers, you can see that zero is up the top and zero is here. And then it goes in the positive that way. Okay, so something to note when we get, get through. No, you don't need Illustrator to do this. So I just wanted to highlight what the file looks like first. But what we'll do is I'll just get you to import my file. So to do this, we need to load up the uh, curve into our program, into Maya. So we'll go File, Import. And I'll just go to my Assets folder grab that bottle file. Now, notice that it's down the bottom, right? It's not even on the top. So let's let's move it first, just to make it easy for us. So we'll just move it up in the Y. In fact, you can move the pivot point by pressing the D key. You don't have to do this, this bit, makes it a little bit easier and then I'm just going to just put it down the bottom and I'll just hide the grid and what we're going to do now is inside the modeling toolkit we'll go up to surfaces and it's this option called revolve and if we select that we get the Revolve options. To reset the window, you go edit, reset settings. And by default, you'll notice the output geometry type is set to NURBS, but we don't want that. Um, we want to work in polygons. So we can still use the same tool, but we can output geometry to polygons. And instead of triangles, we're going to keep ours. Um, uh, quads but yeah we'll actually won't use the quad option we'll use control points and what that does it uses our points on our illustrator file so if I zoom into this illustrator file each time I've made one of these points that you can see there these guys here it will create a control point which is basically like a subdivision in one way. Okay, so setting those two options, um, we're good to go. We, all we have to do is press revolve. Now it looks a bit like our object, our image. However, it's, it's very, uh, you know, this could be the look you're going for, but if you wanted to smooth this, control A, Use the smooth tool and just smooth it out. Now the faces are facing the opposite direction that we really want. So we can go up to mesh display reverse and it will reverse the way the faces are pointing out. So what's interesting about this is We've created, we created a curve, and if I go into wireframe by pressing four, we created a curve and then we've done a revolve operation on that curve. And there's actually a history between those two objects. So if I move the curve, the object updates. It's 
what's interesting as well is you can go through and change the I've just gone into component mode vertices make sure it's just on the curve or control points and just moving so with that in mind if we duplicate control D or just clone so using the shift key and move we can quickly make variations of this bottle and because the duplication doesn't have the history they don't update and if we go into our move settings and have a look at the smart duplication options we can see that the geometry drum geometry type is set to copy rather than instance if it was set to instance and we did clone we go back to the curve go into and make sure I've got the curve selected right click other one there we go control vertices and if I update they both update because they're an instance so I'm just going to hide those guys go back here now what's interesting with this is as well if that makes it a bit difficult to work with you can actually move this away so the child being the geometry and then when you update the curve the curve will still update what you want to be trying to avoid though is if I take that whole curve and move it you can see that it starts to change the shape um, this revolve if I press Control A come to the channel box and select the uh, geometry I'll have a node called revolve and this has some of the options that we indicated at the start so we can change them as we go so you can actually change the end sweep so it doesn't go all the way around you can change the segments less segments more segments remember I've smoothed this already and you can even change the axes that it revolves on All right, so that's the revolve tool now to get rid of the history between two objects what we can do is uh, select your object and go up to edit delete by type delete history and now if I change our curve nothing updates so I'm just going to hide that curve all right so a couple of things to note when in Illustrator you have to save an older version and it has to be an open curve for this particular process so you can notice that the curve starts down the bottom goes all the way up and then comes back down um, and it's open at the bottom the when you go to save you need to I'll just save it on my computer you need to save in a legacy mode so if we have a look at our PDF. So in here it goes Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, that's fine. We go save. But this next window here we are, sorry. It says version. So at the moment I'm using Illustrator 2020. To save this out to work in Maya, I 
has to be an Illustrator 8 version, which makes it a, a simple curve. Okay, so you have to save it as the Illustrator 8, and then you can save, save the file. Now, if you don't want to use Illustrator, you can actually make curves inside of Maya. I, I use Illustrator, so I prefer to do it in Illustrator, but uh, uh, Maya has similar uh, sublime curve tools and, and Bezier to curves and, and so forth. And you can do it in here, but the shortcuts are a little bit different and it's a little bit um, you know, different if you're used to the other one. Uh, to create the curves, I think the easiest one is this last tool here, uh, where you click once, click twice, and then you hold and drag, and you can pull out a handle, and then you can click around and, and make a curve. If you want to edit it, you can double click on here and grab the options. So you could break a tangent. Oops. Yeah, you can see that. And now I can edit the tangents. So I'm not sure if you're aware, but curves, how they work is we have a single point on the grid, and then we have these two tangents. Um, and they influence the weight of the curve and the direction. So the direction coming in to the point and the direction coming out of the point. The other one, you might want to try. Yeah, you could try all of these. So there's that one at the end is the one I just used. Uh, this one here, EP curve tool. Click and it just creates. You don't have as much control, but you can get basic shapes really easily and, and nicely. Just by clicking, clicking once. You can actually draw a curve out. The problem with this is though, is you get so many vertices, right? So, um, you know, cause we're doing box modeling, we wanna limit the amount of uh, edge loops where here all these control vertices um, are now like, you know, influencing. You can delete them. However, you know, it's still a bit messy.